Hello, we are back. You are watching CNET's live coverage from CES 2016. I'm Seamus Byrne, the editor down at CNET Australia. Now, health tech is absolutely one of the big trends at CES, and there are a lot of products on show that can help you live a healthier life, not just your standard fitness trackers, but also some stuff that's going into a lot more detail. And we have a few folks here from three companies on our CNET stage that we're going to share a little bit about what they're working on. Uh, so please make welcome Mark Peluso, CEO of Cardio. We have Dr. Joe Anderson, clinical science at Level, and Zach Bomster, the CTO and co-founder at Outlet. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Now, uh, I think we'll have a bit of a look at each of you in turn, uh, so you can kind of do your initial demo and people get a sense of, of what's going on with each of you. I think, uh, yeah, Mark, we'll start with you. I think uh, Cardia seems like they have a really complete package, but we're talking about very sort of detailed health analytics that go a long way beyond uh, some of the stuff that people might just be wearing on their wrist at the moment. Yeah, I mean, one way to describe what Cardio does is uh, we make medical devices that don't look like medical devices and that people actually like to use. And so we focus specifically on the heart and the heart health. And so we have three products. One is called Quadio Arm, it is a blood pressure monitor. The second one is called Quadio Base and is a body weight and body analyzer. And the third one is called Quadio Core and is a wearable ECG monitor. Now Quadio Arm and Quadio Base are on the market. Quadio Core will be on the market after we get FDA approval later this year. Cool, so why don't you uh, show us the, the, the two products you've got in front of okay, us here. So this is a Quadio Arm. It's, uh, believe it or not, a blood pressure monitor, so uh, you'll never guess uh, it's a blood pressure monitor. It's something that if you have on your desk in the office or on your coffee table in the living room, people will never guess what it is. And when it's the time to use it, you simply open it like so, and uh, it goes on your upper arm, which is what the doctor likes for you to take a measurement. There you go. Simple as that. And, uh, we have an app for uh, iPhone, um, Android, and Kindle. And all you have to do, you get a very large start button. And you press the button, and it starts the measurement after a few seconds. So it's doing that whole squeeze in thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, doing a measurement right now. Now, ideally, you're not supposed to talk throughout the measurement, <laughs> but <clears throat> uh, we focus really on creating uh, features that makes it easy and convenient for everybody to measure their blood pressure. I kind of hear it doing its thing there, just from here, yeah. So how long does a typical measurement take with this sort of a, a device? It's about uh, 40 seconds, right. 35 seconds. So yeah, uh, with me talking, it's really hard to make a measurement. <laughs> yeah, cool. What you get is uh, something that looks uh, like this. You, you see so the you values. Put that around the other way, maybe, and you might be able to get a good shot. Okay, so you can see on a table whether your measurement is online, is healthy or not. <clears throat> and as a number of features like friends and family. So for example, if my father is connected to me, I can see every measurement he takes. So from far away, I can uh, keep an eye on him and uh, uh, make sure that he's uh, measuring his uh, blood pressure as often as he should. Cool, and let's have a quick look at the, uh, the base as well, and then we'll sort of, yeah, uh, let the other guys show what sure. they've brought in. So this this is, is the newest thing in your range, right? Yes, this, is, this uh, came on the market only a few months ago. This is Quadio Base, so there's a nice design that makes it look like it's floating on, uh, on the floor. Uh, that makes it suitable. Uh, it's a scale that you don't have to hide inside a closet or behind the bathtub. And as a, a two uh, ways to interact. So as, like any other scale, it will display your weight number and as well as your fat and um, body composition, so muscle, water, and bone mass. But also, in smart feedback mode, uh, will uh, uh, give you feedback with smiles. So depending on whether you are on, on, uh, on um, target or not with your weight, it will give you a different smile and it will also vibrate under your feet differently. So that eliminates the judgment moment in the morning <laughs> when you walk into the bathroom and uh, help people focus more on, on what they're doing with their lifestyle and whether they are uh, progressing towards their weight goals or not. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, Joe, uh, it'd be great. You've got a kind of a whole different uh, thing to what most people might be used to when we think about health tracking uh, because it's actually taking a breath sample to analyze something completely unexpected. That's true. What we what we have, though, really is a, is a way to change the conversation about uh, weight and weight loss. Instead of looking at the scale, which is typically used for weight loss, looking at uh, fat, water, bone mass, and muscle mass, 
we want to focus in on looking at fat metabolism. How much fat are you burning? The idea is, if the scale's not moving, is it because you're not losing fat, or is it simply because you're building up more muscle and increasing water weight? So the way we do that is we take a breath. And in your breath, you have a chemical called acetone, and acetone increases with increasing fat burn or fat metabolism. The more fat you're burning, the more acetone you're producing, the more it shows up in your breath. So the great thing about this as well is there's a bunch of clinical science that's been done over the last 20 to 30 years that relates how much acetone uh, is correlated with the amount of fat you burn per day per week. So uh, acetone, that's like now polish remover, right? That's <laughs> sure, like, you, get, you get that a lot, certainly, yeah. <laughs> but your breath won't actually smell like that. It's, you know, this can uh, smell that on your breath. Right, so this is going to detect acetone at parts per million levels, very, very low levels. We all have about one part per million on our breath in terms of acetone. As you elevate, you get up to two parts per million and higher. So like, how many times a day would are you kind of meant to be using this, uh, this particular product? We are recommending once a day, maybe twice a day, because it takes about three to seven days, and this is the clinical science, to increase your fat metabolism, to change your fat burn. However, the, the, the sad thing is the opposite's true, the opposite is greater. If you come off fat metabolism, maybe you have a lot of beer, you go out with your friends, it can be 24 to 36 hours that you come down. So it takes, it takes the course of days to kind of elevate. Yeah, right, cool. So, and I can, uh, essentially, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll do a quick, quick demonstration, but here's a level device that has a breath pod here that you, that you blow into. Uh, what you do is you take a deeper breath, you hold it for about five seconds, you exhale into the pod for about five seconds, and then you place it back into the level device, and you close it up, and I think you can see that it's, that it's spinning here. The, the front should be spinning and provide a value, and it gives you this, what we call a level score that's related to the actual concentration of acetone. So here we have a three, and we then have an app that shows not only your level score, but if you push the, the number here, you also get your um, parts per million. But more importantly, the thing we like most about it is it tells you how many pounds of fat you're predicted to lose per day, per week, if you keep the value, the, your breath acetone level at that value. Cool, yeah, that's really good. Do you see that, well, we'll, we'll get into some details shortly, and we'll sure. yeah, jump over to Alan here and talk about, I guess, you know, we're talking about a, a very specific niche where there's, I guess, very specific problems for parents, uh, but you've come up with a really clever way to, to track this, right? Yeah, so you know what we've done is we've taken uh, this amazing hospital technology called pulse oximetry. Now, we all know that as the little red, the little, little, excuse me, little red light that they put on your finger at the hospital to get your heart rate and oxygen. Well, what we've done at Outlet is we've focused on taking this technology and miniaturizing it, but more importantly, making it appropriate for monitoring in the home. Um, as a parent myself, many of, many of our founders in the company, parents, we know the stresses that, that new parents are going through, right? Um, we, we, you come home from the hospital with this, with this newborn, and there's no instruction manual. Um, and, and you're given a list of all the things to watch for, right? It's just, it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's, a very, uh, it's a very intense time in your life. And so we as the founders uh, really understood the pain that, that we're trying to address here. And by taking this, this uh, technology and addressing that market to deliver the peace of mind that, hey, I just want to know, is my baby okay? So what we do is we've, as, as I've mentioned, we've taken this technology and we've shrunk it down into a miniature little baby sock uh, that slips right, right over the, the toes of the baby. Um, and then using this technology, we using non-invasive light, we're transmitting red and infrared light through the skin. Um, we, can, we can detect the baby's heart rate and their oxygen levels. We'll then stream that information uh, to the base station. Now, the base station is the primary alert unit for the parents. Um, the, we, we've, we've tried to simplify the design as much as possible. We don't want parents over-obsessing uh, over over the numbers. We want them to be able to look at the base station and know immediately if everything's okay or if, if baby needs attention. Um, so once that information is, is sent over to the base station, it's then sent up to the cloud where a parent can access that information from their smart device. Um, again, our, our focus here is we want to be in the background. Uh, we don't want parents over obsessing over that data. We want to be in the background and we want to let them know confidently that, hey, we're here when it, needs to, when, when it matters most. Um, 
But if you're not hearing from us, don't be thinking of us, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll alert you if something's wrong. So if they, uh, if they do like to obsess and uh, they open up that app, like, would they see like, real-time data coming from the... Yes, yes. So we, you know, we, we do provide those, uh, those vital signs right yeah, there right. on the phone so they can see the vitals in real time. Uh, we've got a lot of parents that have you know, found ways to, to, to figure out when baby's really sleeping. Hey, I found if my, heart, if my baby's heart rate is below 110, I can put them down and they're not going to wake up again. You know? so, so there are little ways that parents have found little, little niche ways to start using the product. But no, the main goal here is, is, is peace of mind and letting parents know cool. baby's okay. Look, I think the, the first thing I wanted to sort of dig in on in a, in a general sense across you guys is, uh, I'm wondering if it's like really the, the hardware that's been, you know, that, that kind of first difficult step with this stuff, or is it actually a, you know, a software and an analytics problem to, to really create something like this that's helpful to people? Uh, you know, I imagine, I, I know Cardi with your sort of chess system, you're talking about replacing a far more complicated system that, you know, would need to be attached to somebody's chest. Uh, you know, is it that sort of, research that has to go first into exactly where you're putting sensors and how you maintain skin contact or you know like what what was that first big challenge you had to solve actually from, from our, the way we look at it is that they are uh, part of or of the of the same uh, uh, thing really and so you can really do one without doing the other in fact for us there is a third element as well which is the uh, services that we have in the cloud, so also the, the connectivity side of the equation is very important. So you really have to conceive and develop all these elements together and in parallel so that you have a solution that works for everybody. Cool, how about you guys with Alit? Again, uh, I think I was talking to one of you guys earlier about the fact that you've, you've kind of redesigned where it's even placed on, on the baby's body. Yeah, so one of the challenges, you know, pulse oximetry is, is is usually placed by someone in the medical industry that's that's skilled and they know where to place it, where they're going to get the, the right sensor contact. Um, so one of our design challenges was how do we make a mom get this sensor in the right spot the first time? And that's that's hard when you've got a, a an infant's foot that will quadruple in size the first year. So a big emphasis was on you know designing the sock, designing uh, the way that the sensor module interfaces, so that we can we can ensure that parents are getting those sensors placed right. Now, additionally, being being wireless helps us, right? Because we don't have to worry about that tether point yeah. that's that's moving those sensors around. But uh, but yeah, that's you know that's that's one of the challenges. Our read is only is is only as good as as where that sensor is getting the reading from. And so, uh, a lot of emphasis put on the design there to ensure that that the sensor placement is correct. Cool. And and Joe, with you guys, obviously you you've talked about something that's a, a clinical technology over a long time, but how do you try to make sure you, you, you're still getting the data right, but you're able to scale it into something that might you know, sit in somebody's bathroom yeah, beside the sink? Absolutely, there's, there's two pieces here. Number one was the sensor technology and getting that to a spot where you can make this into a consumer device and sell it for a price point that consumers are going to appreciate and be able to scale it. The other side was really a challenge in the thought process. A lot of people think when you measure this chemical in your breath, it should be used for a clinical diagnostic. And the great thing about the founder was he thought very differently. He thought, this can be used for health and wellness. We can use this sort of measurement of acetone in your breath for health and wellness, as opposed to just simply a very clinical tool for disease monitoring. Cool. Yeah. And now here's the other kind of big one, I think, is you know, we're talking about technologies here that really can deliver um, very detailed information, reams and reams of data points to somebody. Uh, you end, ultimately, you want to make it useful to somebody. You know, uh, the average person doesn't know how to, you know, go through a spreadsheet of, uh, you know, their their heart history or you know something else. So, uh, yeah, how important is is that? And, and again, I think this scale is uh, an interesting concept. You know, when did you decide actually maybe a, maybe just a little bit of a smiley face is all we need to do to, to give someone feedback? Well, from our point of view, the the issue that people find in in taking care of themselves is actually sticking to their commitments or adherence to whatever prescription they got from the doctors and so on. So uh, creating products that make it easier for people to, uh, to do that, it's, it's very important. And so uh, that is something that you do with design, with the, uh, detailed research on the user experience, the user interface side, uh, and uh, creating uh, interfaces like uh, smart feedback interface with the smile is exactly the kind of thing that kind of makes it, uh, uh, makes the, the product a lot more approachable for people. And so what exactly 
is that feedback point when you see the smile? Like, is this based on, have you set that up somewhere else saying, I, want, I have a target in mind or, or I just want you to keep an eye on a, a, a trend in my weight? Like, what exactly is it trying to deliver through that? So in, in the, the, the typical uh, you, consumer journey is uh, you decide to, for example, lose weight and then you will have some days that you lose weight, some days that maybe weight goes a bit, a bit up or you go to the gym and you work out a lot and uh, uh, you build up muscle mass, which is actually heavier. So you get leaner, but uh, your weight goes up. And so all these kind of things create negative feedback for people, even when they are doing well. And so with the smile, you el we eliminate all of that and, and focus people on what's working for them. And, and so the smile is a, that, that you get is a function of how, what trend you're on for the last several days. Right, and so the daily fluctuation get get out of the equation, and uh, and uh, the scale actually recognizes, for example, that you have more lean mass, and so even if your weight goes up, you still get a smile. Excellent. Right? Yeah. And now again, the whole idea of level is a, a simple number based on something. I guess most people wouldn't might not even understand this when they first see it and 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 think they might buy it, but just making it really simple. And that absolutely is the biggest challenge that we had for the level device was you have this number that's a concentration of a chemical that no one's ever heard of, right? So the messaging is absolutely critical and that was really general for I think every sort of device that you're trying to take from a medical equipment side into the consumer's hands is trying to get them educated relatively rapidly without making them a physician, right? So a lot of our messaging is simply around that to say, hey look, what we're really trying to help you out with is to measure fat metabolism. The chemical is beside the point. Or whatever the metric is, the physical measurement is really beside the point. We're going to help you measure fat metabolism and we're going to get this done and let us tell you what that means. And so when you get that level score and whether it's your low or your high, you will know, hey, I'm doing things right. And if it's, if it's low, if it's two or less, then we will provide you some general guidelines. Oh, and yeah, here's, right. here's the second piece, is once you have those general guidelines, then you get to figure out about your body. And I think we're all trying to some, some way to do that. What's going on inside our own body that's different than someone else's body, or your body, or my body. So, all those pieces. So, uh, we're about to wrap up. So, like, maybe a one quick line from each of you. What do you, what do you think uh, people, you know, when they're caring about health tech now, what, what should they try to focus on, I guess, rather than just numbers or whatever it might be? Just, you know, one quick line from each of you. Actionable data, actionable information. Cool. Yeah, something the user can understand and go forward with. And connectivity, so you get the information in the hands of the people that can make the most value out of it. Maybe your family, your friend, your doctor. Okay.